Hit it. Cool. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Hope you are well. Are you okay, Sam? I'm very well, thanks. I'm, I'm a bit blooming hot. I'm not going to lie to you, Lisa. I would love to know if anyone else is as hot as me, especially sitting in my office with my new flashy lights. But feel, if people can know 36 degrees, that would sound incredibly arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyone else is hot as me? <laughs> it's also, you know, the temperature's high as well. It's awful. <laughs> so, yeah, what are we talking about? This is a really good one tonight for everybody. To we're yeah. talking about selling without selling. Yeah. Yeah, I love this topic. And, it, and it's something where I see a lot of new coaches, see a lot of coaches, not just new coaches, but really, really, really get up in their heads. So have a great conversation with someone, then get up in their heads when it comes to talking about money or talk about money, get an objection and then get up in their heads and avoid having those conversations mm -hmm. um, and just don't nurture that space at all. So thought it would be cool if we did a little bit of... Um, something whatever whatever that looks like we will really find out it. over the next few minutes but yeah just speak to that a little bit yeah man and why is why do you think it's just so relevant to new coaches or to coaches creating clients why is this particularly relevant to them i think this is one of the things that gets in a lot of people's way so i think this is a sticking point for a lot of people so generally this is like a big generalization but People go into coaching because they want to help people, because they care about people, because they want to have an impact, they want to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And the business side of coaching does involve sales. And a lot of people hate selling, hate being sold to, hate the feeling of pushy, pushy salesmen, pushy saleswomen. And so I think there's a story that's made up about that. So when it, when when coaches go into this profession, I don't know, it's like they have an image in, in our minds of, of like a pushy car salesman, you know, or like you hate going into a shop and the salesperson pouncing on you. And so just that, that association with the word sales, I think can be an instant turn off for a lot of people and put them in their heads. Yeah, I agree with that, man. There's also a part around like self-worth and stuff. Like when we talk about money as a measure, you know, because we see it as a measure very often, instead of it just being about the number that it is, there's a measure there and it becomes often about, especially for new coaches, I mean, we've seen it, you know, self-worth, can I charge that much, should I be charging that much, having that conversation feels awkward, feels icky, and we kind of often avoid it, and, you know, we've seen people actually actively try and avoid it as well, so, yeah, I agree, I mean, this is something that can really make or break a coaching practice, you know, this sort of stuff, and, and hopefully in this live, what we're going to do is, kind of ease it up a little bit, create some ease around it, create some clarity around it, like loosen it off because it, it can be a little bit of a, an intense subject, you know, for, for a lot of people. So what would you like to share, Lisa, like, what, what, for these guys, what, what is it that's most important for them to hear, do you think? I think, I'm trying to think what made the difference for me and I'm also thinking about some of the conversations we've had with our clients as well. Um, and there, there was definitely something around not making it about me, right? So there's something, in fact, this came up in conversation today with a client of ours around, there is no difference. When you're coaching someone, you can be coaching them really freely on self-doubt, on limiting beliefs, on insecurity, on you know, relationships with their parents, with their family, on work, on finding a new career. All of these topics, we go in and we're like really curious about, like what's stopping you from having that career now? What's getting in the way? Where does this come? All of that stuff. And we're just so fluid and free in that conversation. And we don't create a ton of thought about it. We're just so open to just being really present with our client and just and exploring in service to them right and then it's almost like that's happened for the first 60 minutes of the session and now we need to talk about money that's different right so it's like we give our fee we say what it looks like to work with us we get an objection it's too high i can't afford it i wasn't expecting it to be that much and then all of a sudden it's like no that's not an opportunity to coach someone that's not an opportunity to coach someone on a money story that's not an opportunity to get really curious and see 
Is it true? Are there blocks there? Is it just that it's not, you know, it's not right now? Is there something else we could do? All of a sudden, it's like all of that juicy stuff we were just doing for the for the previous hour has gone out the window. We've made it about us. And then we either avoid it or we get up in our heads and it feels icky and it just doesn't feel like it it flows. So I want to point people in the direction of seeing there is absolutely no difference between coaching somebody on limiting beliefs, saboteurs, any of that stuff, and coaching someone on money. There's no difference whatsoever. And I think the only thing that happens that makes it feel different is that something shifts inside our mind. We have totally different thinking in that moment and we're making it, we're taking things personally, we're making it about us, we're not wanting to feel pushy or salesy or convince someone and we get caught up in all of that story. Yeah, exactly. And that, that, I think you've hit the nail on the head there. It reminds me of the, exactly the conversation we had today, you know, with this particular coach and just because it feels different doesn't make it different, right? Because that's what feelings do, right? They polarize, they can change the way that we see things. It's like, oh, the, the way that I'm feeling here is uncomfortable, therefore there must be something wrong, but it's not true. It's just that it's, it's new for us. We're at an edge, right? And that's the cool thing. Because once we can navigate that and, and, and happily navigate that feeling uncomfortable, which is okay, then that's often mirrored, often mirrored in our conversations as well. And that's where we grow as a coach. So kind of necessary to feel like that sometimes I think mm. you know, it's all good there's nothing wrong <laughs> right just want to normalize that so there's nothing wrong yeah but yeah I love that there's nothing wrong with the experience it's just it's part of mm. this whole roller coaster of life yeah, it's man. not it just because it feels uncomfortable for us doesn't make that a bad experience or a one we need to get rid of it's just all part of it and the more we can see it's all part of it. There's nothing going on here that I need to be worried about. It's just a feeling. It's just an emotion. No more than that. That's it. We don't need to be afraid of it anymore. We can kind of welcome it in. Yeah. But the minute we start to think it's a problem, I don't want to feel like this, we put more focus on it and we start getting all tongue-tied and, and searching for uh, our escape room. <laughs> exactly that. <laughs> okay, yeah. but I'll just email you. Oh, yeah, you yeah. Ideas. <laughs> can't afford it anyway. Don't worry about it. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> And the other thing, Sam, I mean, I kind of touched on this in that first point, but truly just stepping into service, like this is your opportunity to, to find out more and get curious around someone. And it only feels pushy if you're coming from that place of trying to convince someone or trying to, you know, secure their business or get them as a client. And it feels, it does feel really, really different when that's not your intention. You've no, you no attachment to outcome other than being in service to that person yeah. and creating that space where it's really safe to explore what is going on with the money piece like tell me tell me why it's a no for you is it that you don't have the money is it that you just don't feel like you you know are you scared to invest because you don't feel like you you're going to get a return on investment it's not a guarantee like tell me where you're at with it and just being super curious just staying curious and and exploring with your client where they're at because that's that is for me that's the way of selling without selling it's giving them a real experience of coaching and that experience doesn't stop when the objections come in you know that's that's really where the work needs to be done sometimes that can be the first real piece of coaching that you might be doing in that session because this is something that might feel really sticky for them yeah so just slowing it down not being in a rush to get out of the conversation but slowing it down staying with them staying present and asking a lot of questions and and who knows what you might create you know like i've been in i've been in situations where it's been a no for one-on-one -on -one coaching because that was just the price point was just too high for them at that particular moment in their life but through, through staying in that conversation and asking permission, do I, can I ask you some questions around this? Is that okay? There's no pressure. I'm just curious. I want to really understand. So is it just the money or is there something else? Is the money the only thing that's stopping you from saying yes right now? And they're like, yeah. And it's like, cool. If it was a more accessible price point, how would that feel for you? Yeah, that would feel good. Okay, you're open to exploring some options. I'd love that. Yeah. So again, there's nothing pushy about that. It's just genuine curiosity 
and service like when you see someone is having shifts when you see the difference it's making in someone's life and they're ta- and they're saying to you this has been like just a few sessions that we've done has been transformational like i've really started to think differently i've started to see different experience here there and here and i would love to continue when you're hearing that it's like it's not in service to go oh well you can't afford me so let's not do anything then mm. right that's the opposite of service it's like i want to build on that momentum i want to help somebody see more of what it is that they've been seeing and if there is a way to to do that being flexible with our fees being flexible with our programs especially as a new coach like be a working coach first we've talked about this before like don't hang out for i need to i need to have a 5k price tag for a six month program right it's like if someone can't reach to that how would three months fit better for you like would 2500 be better for you is that doable do you want to pay an installment would that make it easier for you they come always in service to find a way to work with someone if it feels like it's a really good fit for us. Yeah. Yeah. So if we, you know, cause I was just thinking back to when I was brand new coach or I was a new coach and I hadn't actually created any paying clients yet. Just wondering like, what would be, not would be hearing this conversation, but what, what would, what can we say that will help somebody move or navigate from that space of, I'm not sure how to create clients. I'm not sure how to sell without selling kind of thing. Like what could we say that will help them move forwards with and, and, and get into those conversations and create those experiences with people? Well, I think the first thing I would just turn it back on, on them and say, after you've watched this video, what are you hearing? Yeah. What are you actually seeing from this? Cause the answers to that question around how to sell without selling are in this video. You know, we talk about service, we talk about thought, we talk about where our experience comes from, we talk about how how all experience is okay. There's a ton of stuff in this conversation, but I, I want to know what people are hearing. Because yeah. it might be that we're not articulating it in a way that answers that question for someone. It might be that this prompts more questions. It might be that this prompts, yeah, but. Mm-hmm. And that's what I want to know about from people. Like, what are you seeing and, and where do you still feel like you're like you're selling instead of serving yeah yeah that's exactly it it's kind of like just have it be about the conversation like and that's it like that's it. even if you want to make a commitment that you're not going to talk about money with someone you're not going to sell you're not going to talk about working with someone you know in that session if that takes this this sense of oh, you know oh, discomfort out or it allows you to show up that session cool have another session with them another time but it, there is definitely something there what you said around a service and an, an expectation and just taking that away i just show up and serve and allow, allow that experience to set itself right and just be in that experience and allow it to, to allow that conversation to happen naturally if that's what's going to happen mm. no but yeah just i think just thinking back to when I was new, I think that the thing that was most, and again, this is only my experience, it's not necessarily for everyone, but the thing that was most helpful was just to literally take one step at a time. Like how many, if I've had a hundred conversations with people and I haven't created any clients from it, then I might be starting to ask myself, okay, how am I not getting this? So <laughs> what's going on here, right? But if you haven't had a good few conversations yet, then don't, don't worry about it. Like don't allow that to be a problem or don't let that be a problem. Like, have those conversations first and just see where it takes you find your feet in coaching and i think that was something that was really helpful for me interestingly and that took the edge off and then i showed up to my coaching session entirely differently anyway yeah. i just showed up as sam coaching not coach sam <laughs> right it's a bit of an important distinction for me actually turning point um, but yeah like, like lisa said you know if there's anything you guys are hearing not hearing if there's something that you want to ask around this subject then please do because this is one of those topics that you can make or break you're either going to start or you're not you know and 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 we'd love to serve you and help you in that so if there's anything you're getting stuck on just tell us and we'll we'll explore it the the only other thing that i want to add that just popped into my mind was around in the coach's chair be curious enough to understand what your client is looking for Mm. right 
get yourself really clear on what that space is going to be between the two of you, what you would be working on together, what's been helpful for them so far, where they want to go next. Get really clear because the clearer you are on what you're going to be working together on, then the easier it is to, to talk about working together. Yeah. Right. And that's another block that I see. It's like there's a lot of, and there's nothing wrong with this in the early days as well. Just I would rather you're on the pitch playing and, and it feeling messy and kind of fluffing your way through things than waiting to get it perfect and feel like you're ready. So as best you can, just get in there, into conversation, get curious and, and don't be afraid to say, here's what I'm hearing. Does that sound like this is something that you're looking for? You know, you tell me what is it that you're wanting from a coach? Why are you here? Why have you said yes to this conversation? And the clearer you are on that, the easier it's going to be to say, okay, I know how we should work together. Yeah. Right? Because if you don't know what you're working on, how are you going to say three months feels like a good fit, six months feels like a good fit, this is going to be a year-long program? How are you going to say that? So you can say it with more certainty when you're really clear yeah. on what the person's looking for as well. And what that will do is make you listen better. Yeah, exactly. And, it, and that only comes from conversation as well, doesn't it? <laughs> right, that's, it kind of comes back to that. Get into conversation. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Cool. Should we leave it there? I think we should. Yeah, I, know, well, I say I think we should. But um, we did agree to try and keep these lives a little bit shorter. So we're, we're saying that so you can all keep us accountable to that as well. <laughs> Cut us off. Yeah. All right, guys, if you have any questions, we'd love to hear them. Um, don't stay stuck. There's no reason to. And on that note. <laughs> we're still alive. We're still alive. Bye.